Hi class, uh, this is Greg. Um, as part of doing our projects, um, you need to deal with some issues that affect you when uh, using API endpoints and kind of small scale programming. In other words, no server involved, just writing code um, in the browser. And I've put together this video to help you. Along the way, I'm gonna teach you how to use a Yelp endpoint and use the program Postman. Uh, we will write code with that endpoint and we'll address um, the, the chief problem and that is APIs that don't support cores. Uh, Yelp is one case. There are many others that are also gonna be true. Uh, it's true that they won't support cores. So even if you're not using Yelp, um, I, this video will be useful for you. And cores stands for cross-origin resource sharing. Um, uh, there are basically policies that are part of Chrome and other browsers that prevent certain types of access. And when an API allows cores, it's a way of pull vaulting over that restriction. So um, in a case of Yelp, which does not allow cores, we have to find a solution around it. And that's really the purpose of this uh, video. So to get started, open yourself up a cheat sheet in whatever note-taking program you like to use. You're gonna put all the things you need to know to use Yelp and uh, Postman and things like that. And let's go to the Yelp API to start with. Okay, just uh, search on uh, Yelp API. And we're looking for the link that says Yelp Fusion. Okay, uh, don't look at API 2.0. It's out of date and I think not even working. So Yelp Fusion. And we're going to use the search API in Yelp. Many other, uh, many other API endpoints to use. But here's the search endpoint. There's your URL. So copy that and put it in your cheat sheet. So search endpoint URL. Okay. Um, and here's all our parameters that are available to us. We can do a simple query with just two parameters, term, which is the search term, and location, which for us will be a zip code. We'll use an Irvine zip code. So you can uh, capture that information by you know, writing a query string. And this is what we use, restaurants, ampersand separator, and a location is uh, 92697 for uh, Irvine. All right. So that's, that's all with uh, the Yelp API uh, docs for right now. Let's get Postman installed if you haven't done it already. All right, I would like you to go to uh, search for Chrome Web Store. Uh, search on Postman. Skip past the extensions, go to the app section and there'll be a blue add to Chrome button for you. So click that and that'll install Postman. Having done that, bring up Postman. And you know, this is a little sandbox for you to test APIs. So we'll start by creating our first little sandbox for the, uh, for the search endpoint. So let's copy that URL, let's put it in here. And the default method is get. And we want to we want to stick with that. And then we need to add parameters to it. This is where your query string fields go, and we'll type them in this way. So term will be restaurants, and uh, location will be nine two six nine seven. And watch as I'm typing; it's actually filling in the query string at the end of the URL. So. A little bit of reality there of how these things relate to each other. Okay, that's a complete uh, request. Let's see what happens when we try to use it. Okay, we've got a problem. You've probably you've probably heard that uh, authentication tokens are needed in services. So let's solve that problem now. Okay, we need to go back to the Yelp API. Okay, uh, 
let's go to uh, Fusion API uh, and go to authentication. Scroll down a little bit to the get an access token area. This is the URL. All right, the way we retrieve an access token is we use another API endpoint, and that's the authentication token uh, endpoint. So we'll copy that into your uh, cheat sheet. Let's, okay. And uh, one more thing in, uh, uh oh, where did my page go? Uh, okay, one more thing. If you scroll up a little bit, we need to create an app in our own developer space. So on the Yelp's developer site. So create app, and you're going to fill in this form. You're looking at the results of my uh, project, Trilogy Project Zero. So pick an app name fill in whatever of these fields is required and press save changes and go at the top your values will be there first value you need is your client id put that in your cheat sheet and the next will be your client secret okay that will be redacted okay so that's supposed to be your secret, and oh, I'll let you see my secret for a second. Anyway, uh, press show, and you'll get uh, your secret. Uh, copy that and paste it for later use. Okay. Now let's go back to Postman. Actually, what we're going to need for Postman is we want this, end, this authentication endpoint URL again. So copy that, and in Postman... <laughs> Let's make a new request, okay? A separate request for requesting an authentication token. And this one uses method of post rather than get. All right, it doesn't use params. And surprisingly, it doesn't use authorization either. We need to pass in into the body. Um, we need to choose a submit type of X W W W form URL encoded. And we have to type three things in here. Number one is grant type. And grant, the value of grant type is client underscore credentials. The second parameter is client ID. Okay, go grab that. Next one is client secret. Okay, so you would paste in your unredacted um, uh, client secret there. Um, we'll just go to my uh, Yelp token tab, which is finished. Um, and you're saying, oh, Greg's showing his client secret. No, I'm only showing you part of my client secret. So when I press send, you'll, you'll see the output that you already saw below. And now we have an access token here. This is, this is your token. You want to grab that whole thing, except for the, the quotes, of course. OK, save that. Now notice uh, this says token type of bearer. Just keep that in mind. We're, we're going to see that word bearer in a minute. Something else just of interest, this token will expire in this many milliseconds, whatever billion or trillion that is. Let's just explore that. How many milliseconds is that? If we take that and divide it by the number of milliseconds in a second, divided by the number of seconds in a minute, and the number of minutes in an hour, Okay, it'll be this many hours, around 175. If you want to know how many days that lasts, and just factor that into the equation. It'll be 7.36 days is how long this token will last. Now, uh, something to think of for the future of your app when you're making it a little more sophisticated. 
you know the token that you use will go out of date if you're if you're using your app more than 7.3 days so you might want to think of some sort of automation for retrieving a new token so first of all how to detect when a token has uh, has expired and then how to actually retrieve one inside the code but that's for another day we won't do that today so um, where are we now so um, let's go back to our first postman tab okay and by the way we haven't saved any of these tabs yet let me just show you a thing about postman where you can use postman to organize your um, your URLs so um, let's give this request a meaningful name instead of its full URL. Let's call it the Yelp search endpoint. I'll skip all this stuff, but let's create a collection where we'll, we'll group these all together into your project one group. Okay, you have to click the check mark here and then save. And here's our project one area here with our Yelp search endpoint. And let's do, let's do the same for our uh, token grabber. Uh, let's save that. Yelp auth token generator. And let's put that in our project one folder. Okay, so we've got two, two things in our project one folder we've got to get in the post. Okay, so we are going to take our search endpoint though and fix this problem here. All right, interestingly enough, we're not going to use the authorization tab. We're going to use the headers tab. And we create a key called authorization. Not authentication, but authorization. Okay. The value is the word bearer. Remember I said I was going to mention that before? All right, the word bearer, then a space, and then you paste in your entire token. Okay. Now with that there, let's see what happens when we run our service. Okay, we've got actual data back. It's showing Irvine, showing restaurants. All right, great. So um, let's write some JavaScript now to uh, call the service. So I've got some pre-written JavaScript here. Um, let me walk through a little bit of it. So. I'm going to use jQuery, so I've got a script including um, a retrieval from a jQuery CDN. Uh, I've copied in my token into my token uh, variable and actually wrote up the word bearer and then a space and then the whole token right there. And here's my Yelp search uh, endpoint. I call it Yelp search URL. Here's the Ajax requests we're going to make and I'm going to pass in all the arguments uh, using a JavaScript object, and that object will have a uh, uh, parameter of URL and a parameter of data. I'm taking off these quotes because they're not needed. Okay, so URL is my Yelp search URL. Data is my two uh, query string form parameters, so term of restaurants, location 62697, and then the authentication token, the authorization token goes in here in headers. Okay, you pass it an object, with a uh, with a field of authorization and then you pass this token including the word bearer and the space that follows it okay now do you think it's going to work it does not and this is the error you see when you have problems with uh, cross-origin resource sharing okay yelp does not allow cross-origin resource sharing and it's complaining about it here. So uh, there's a nifty fix for this and other APIs besides Yelp that don't support cores. It comes from our friends at Heroku. Uh, Heroku is something we'll be studying later in the course, but they have a nifty page out there called Cores Anywhere, and it will enable cross origin requests to anywhere. And I'll just show you quickly how it works. Um, first of all, let's. Uh, Let's save that um, that URL. Okay, there's our course helper. And the way you put together a URL now for request is you use this as the start of URL, your URL, and then 
you put you make sure this uh, forward slash separator is there and then you put your endpoint okay so now um, cores will use its magic to uh, fix the I'm sorry uh, Heroku will use its magic to fix the cores problem in this fashion so let's look at the second version of my code okay it's almost the same I have a new variable called my cores anywhere URL okay there's that URL I just pasted it into your uh, cheat sheet and when I construct my URL I'm gonna say cores the URL cores anywhere URL followed by a forward slash separator and then the Yelp search URL and everything else is the same here let's correct that okay and now let's see what results we get all right no red that's good and here's an actual object and there's that same data that we saw in postman okay so now we got stuff working you've solved the course problem which can happen in Yelp and other uh, APIs and let me just leave you with one Final thing, if you're interested in learning more about cores, it's a pretty technical topic. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's, you know, it's web security. Um, I'll paste this URL into, uh, I mean, you can do that if you want, put it in your cheat sheet. And I've already slacked this out to the general channel. So you can find that uh, URL in case you want to learn more about cores. And that's it. So I hope this helps your projects and have a great time writing them. Bye.